In these two videos, we will be programming the M10 by 0.5 thread. And since you already know how to create a new tool, I have already created the trading tool for us. So if I look into 1501, I have a trade chasing tool with the right values. It's okay on that. And I did also edit the speed for S15 at 2800 RPM. And if we look on operation line number five, the box 10.3, which is where we will be programming our trade, I have already edited the description and the icon. So we can start directly with our cycle. So I click on the wizard button here, and it opens a window with a choice of cycles. Two of them are for trading, G933 and G978. We will choose this time 933. So I select it and I click OK. And this will open uh, windows with different variables to fill. The first four are mandatory. And the rest have already some default values. If they suit what you are doing, you can leave them as they are. So let's start with P0, the pitch. Here we enter the pitch of the thread. In our case, it's 0 0.5. So I hit enter and I type 0 0.5 and then enter again. It says here negative if it's an internal thread. So in our case, it's outside, so it's positive. I select the next variable, P1, start of trading in X. I hit the space bar to change it. And then I input my start diameter, which is 10, enter. Next one, start of trading at Z. I hit the space bar. So on my part, the trade start at minus 12 millimeter. Of course, I want to start a little bit before to let the time for the Z axis to accelerate to its full speed before it enters the material. There is a rule of thumb that says that you want to start 1.5 to 2 times the pitch before you hit the material to let time for the axis to accelerate. This is a rule of thumb, and of course, it can vary in depending on the speed and then the pitch you are doing. In our case here, we will uh, use, let's say, the 1.5. So it will be one millimeter and a half. I will start at minus 10.5, minus 10.5. Enter. End of trade in Z. Same thing, I want to end my trade a little bit after the actual end of the trade to let the time for the axis to decelerate before returning for the next pass. So I will go uh, one millimeter further. So let's say minus 18. It takes less time for the axis to decelerate than it needs to accelerate. P4, end of trading in X. If I don't put any value, it will take the value that we have in P1 and it will be a cylindrical trader. This is what we want. You could do a taper trade, etc., by putting a different value here. In our case, we leave it as it is, and it's going to be same starting point as arrival point. P5, trading tool angle, 60 degrees. Most of the trades have a 60 degrees angle, so it's okay like that. Height of trade. The height of trade is calculated automatically by the cycle with this constant value here of 0 0.613 multiplied by the pitch. So I let it calculate for me, no problem. P7, angle of entry at start of trading, 45 degrees. That's fine, I don't have anything in front. I can let it enter with a 45 degrees angle and the exit the same. But let's say I, wanted, I want to have it to to leave the thread straight. So I just hit enter and I put 90 degrees. So it come out straight just uh, to see. Safety margin. 
this is uh, how much is going to move out clear from the diameter of thread before returning for the next pass. This is a standard value that suits me well. I leave it as it is. Physical limits, I, I leave them as they are. Now, this one is interesting. 12, 13, 14, number of rough passes, finished passes, and blind passes. So by default, we have two finish and two blind passes. That's fine. I will enter the amount of rough passes that I want. Let's say four rough passes, which is plenty enough for uh, the size of the trade we are doing. Differences between the rough pass and finish pass. On the rough pass, the tool will go down in every subsequent pass along the side of the angle of the tread. While for the finish pass, it will go down straight in X only. And then the blind passes are simply, in this case, two passes that will be executed once the tool has reached the final depth, it will make two supplementary passes to relieve any stress on the material on the part accumulated with the effort of cutting. So I would say you need at least two of them. This we will leave it for the moment. And we will look at M function for spindle. We are on position five, so it's spindle M15 in the O3 direction, that's good. And the rotation I will change since we said we're going to trade at 2800 RPM. Now the approach. Since I am starting um, at minus 10.5, I want to do my approach, let's say, at uh, minus 8 in Z. And then in X. Uh, my bar is uh, 11 millimeter. I want to do my approach at 12, let's say. And I put 12. And same for the retract position. Once the cycle is done, I want to retract at 12 or even more, let's say 15. And then I am done. I click OK and it generates my cycle. So this is it. I will validate my cycle now. And in the next video, we will see how to simulate it uh, with the graphic display. So this is all for the editing of the cycle. See you in the next video for simulation.